Hey guys, Coach John Zombro here with The Lifetime Athlete, and I'm back at you with another one of our Peak Performance Masterclass topics. This one is all about effective training. So when we think about how do we take the training program that we're crafting, and we found out uh, in previous videos how to understand the different components of training and how to personalize it. Now we want to say, how can we make it most effective? Well, the, the very first thing we want to do is we want to look at the types of training and the target or the objective that we are trying to accomplish with each application. So first of all, we have MOSTAT, which is mobility stability training, and that is what develops agility. We have LIST, or Low Intensity Steady State Work, from which we derive endurance. We have RAST, which is resistance and strength training that helps to develop muscular gains, bone density, hypertrophy, and strength. And we have HERT, or High Intensity Repetition Training, using an interval-based uh, work and rest bout to develop power. And that can be in both the cardiorespiratory uh, capacity or in a muscular uh, driven output. And lastly, we have invert or maximum velocity extended rest training, and that's all about sprinting, developing speed. So once we understand the types of training and we have already figured out, well, what are our strengths and weaknesses? Which ones do we need to bias given where we are and what our goals are? Then we start to ask ourselves, how do we uh, affect this mixology? How do we make our training most effective? And it's basically by doing this. We want to figure out what, what we want to do with these elements and how we want to put them into a workout. And so a workout or a training session will begin with a warm-up. And whatever word that you prefer to use, that's a time of activation, cueing, priming, readying the body for training. And it's when we move away from uh, the other thoughts or demands of the day and get focused in, intentional, purpose-driven about our workout. And we should always do as little warm-up as possible, but as much as necessary. So we, wanna, we don't want to waste time, but we want to get to that point where we're ready to do the primary objective of a training session. And that's where this word primacy comes into play because primacy really says this in training. Do first what matters most. So if you are uh, an athlete who is trying to develop strength or, or muscles, so let's say you're a football player off season or you're a bodybuilder, you're going to lift first uh, following an appropriate warm-up because that's what you need. If you're an endurance athlete, you're probably going to work on aerobic means. And so we're going to take these items and shuffle the deck a bit for each athlete. Then we go to recency. And recency is really the opposite. The body, the brain, the neuromuscular system remembers best what you did last. And so when we're trying to ingrain a motor pattern, a skill, or uh, even a, a, a mental uh, conditioning or toughness aspect, we want to put some of that training towards the end of our session. First of all, so that it doesn't get in the way of the primary objective, but also so we can gain this um, learning advantage. An example of that might be if we have uh, a basketball player who wants to, needs to work on free throw shooting, we might add some of that additionally at the end of practice, or a distance runner who's trying to improve their uh, ability to switch gears, switch mechanics, and kick or sprint at the end of a race. Uh, there's an application for doing some uh, work like that at the end of a training session. Now we have cool down. Again, choose whatever words you like, but this is the time where we can bring the body out of the sympathetic nervous system state, which it was probably in for most of this training session, and back to the parasympathetic or rest and digest or repair and recover and recuperate state. And the sooner we get back there, the sooner the gains and the adaptations start to happen. In doing that, the cool down can be comprised of light activities, uh, 
um, dynamic stretches, even the use of static stretching, wh whatever is indicated to allow for this uh, recovery or rapid reduction in uh, stimulation process. And it's also a great time to confer with coach and teammates or self and we want to have that in a training program. Now, uh, the concept of the fitness maker, everything we just described would be a very purposeful training session, which indeed is a fitness or conditioning maker or ability or capacity builder, which is really what we're trying to do as we seek peak performance. But we generally don't do the same thing every day or the most um, aggressive workloads every day in training. We have filler and filler is recovery training which could be and oftentimes is lighter, shorter, briefer, um, easier types of things, although we can still use high intensity strategically if the duration is kept short. But essentially we apply filler in an athlete's workout program until he or she is ready yet again to do another fitness maker. And that's really one of the art forms of training. So that's in a very brief video, uh, an overview of how to make your training more effective by understanding the types of training and what they deliver and then what you need and how you're going to organize that. So thanks again for being with me. This is Coach Jay-Z signing off from the Lifetime Athlete, where not only can you achieve peak performance at any age, you can become hard to kill.